So to start out here, I want to just go through the, the things that we have on the table for you to see. Uh, first of all, up front here is the front drive unit. Um, there's a permanent magnet motor in the front and the uh, gear mechanism in the, that connects up to it the, together makes the drive unit. And uh, this one has a, also an integrated inverter that is packaged on the end of the um, gear mechanism, the drive unit. Um, probably because I thought it was interesting because uh, instead of putting it on the side, because this is up front and it may be in the way of a crash. So we want to keep that out of the way, which is a good idea. So uh, this would be the rotor of the permanent magnet motor from the front and the stator. Um, the output drive comes out here. And then uh, moving on to the rear drive motors, there are two motors in the back. Uh, and so they're kind of symmetrical arrangement of one motor on each side. Each motor drives a different wheel. Um, both induction motors in the back. And on this case in the, in the rear, the two inverters are packaged up here, uh, connected right up close to the motor on the side. Um, and of course in the rear, they're out of the way. Um, so that's sort of a, a quick overview of the items that we have on the table. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit later about these uh, examples from, of induction motors from previous motors and the magnets also from previous Tesla uh, motors and how they're different. Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. <clears throat> Today we're going to be uh, looking a little bit here on um, the, uh, the motors uh, that we've gotten out of our, our cyber beast here. Um, we're looking at, with all and told, um, 845 horsepower Anyway, what we're going to do is uh, Paul and I are going to be talking a little bit about uh, what we found, what we like, and a couple of things that we don't much care for. Um, first off, I, I'm going to I'm going to give a couple of note or a couple of things that I, I feel are strongly um, uh, uh, strong points for this system. The first one is the fact that this PM motor here. Let me just move this out of the way a bit. The PM motor here with the, um, this is the rotor and this is the, um, this is the stator. And you can see that Tesla's moved away from the uh, woven, uh, yeah, the, the woven wrong. system and uh, gone to, uh, gone to what we call, kind of like call hairpin. This one here is a little closer to what we saw, I think we saw on the Kia, right? It's, Except it is for similar the, to the Kia, um, and since they're both 800 volt motors, that makes a lot of sense. And in my first video, I went into quite a lot of detail on, on why it's a really good idea to go with this type of construction with eight yeah. bars per slot. Um, and so they minimize, they get the, kind of the best of both worlds, minimum uh, uh, losses for the motor. It's, uh, yeah. it's a good way to go. But anyways, that's what we're seeing here and whatever is, what else is nice about this is that <clears throat> the diameter of this stator is the same diameter as the stator that we've got for the induction motor. <clears throat> now they're Not two. only that, but they also look like they use very similar winding pattern. Yeah. Uh, we used to verify that when we uh, get it apart, but uh, it's uh, clearly similar tooling or maybe identical tooling for well, not identical uh, because yeah. if we look here, we can see that the the, um, the contact is about uh, three inches here. Yeah, the stack length and, for that motor is smaller. Than and that. this one here is uh, quite a bit bigger. So um, <clears throat> we should have taped or whatever, should have measured that earlier. But but this this does have quite a bit more power. In fact, I'm thinking that the cost of I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of other uh, details, but I think that the cost of this motor is equivalent to both those motors put together. Thanks to the Three Dimensional Services Group for sponsoring this video. Whether you're looking to source metal stamping, precision CNC machining, laser cutting, welded assembly, or plastic injection molding, 
The three-dimensional services group should be the source to transform your EV, aerospace, appliance, or technology designs into reality, while also providing a bridge to start of production. Hey boys and girls, I'm here with Dan, and we're at um, Three Dimensional Services Group. And um, Dan, uh, this is pretty impressive. Why don't you give us a little background on, um, on what you guys do here? Okay, well, uh, the Three Dimensional Services Group was founded by Douglas Peterson 31 years ago. Uh, we've grown into the world's largest, most capable, and most agile prototype and low volume manufacturer. In essence, we're a job shop on steroids. We work with the world's most innovative companies to validate their designs, and then we're able to take our low volume manufacturing processes and scale them across a massive amount of equipment to allow us to support volumes that a traditional prototype shop would never be able to support. Uh, we, we're always working with our clients to accelerate their product development type timelines and enable them to be as successful as possible by bringing their market or their products to market as quickly as possible. I think that this is a, a really good arrangement. Um, you can turn those motors off. Uh, I think you yep. were mentioned. Yeah, that's right. We uh, one of the things we talked about in the earlier video from on induction motors is how the fact that you can turn them off and when you do, they have very low spin loss. And so in addition to being lower cost, this is a way for Tesla to give them uh, customers better electric range, especially on the highway. So on the highway, you only really need um, <clears throat> 20, 30 horsepower to propel the car down the road. Uh, and so the front motor alone can do the job and these can be off. And uh, yeah, that, that gives uh, the customer the most electric range. Um, Hyundai does it a little differently. They have two PM motors, but they have a disconnect clutch to allow them to disconnect one of the motors. And so this, their, Tesla's able to do this without the extra part of the disconnect clutch. Although they did use that uh, disconnect clutch for the front motor to, yeah, to give them to this uh, um, <clears throat> limited slip differential capability, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is really a, a cool feature. Right, it's on the opposite side. Let's uh, yeah. spin around and we'll have a look at that. So over here you can see, this is how the, uh, the diff is locked. I'm the wrong guy to do that. Why don't you just lift that up and down for a minute? Okay, so we can see from the, uh, this little part here is, is magnetically pulled down naturally, but in here there's an electromagnet. Uh, and this electromagnet, when you energize it, pulls this apart and allows slip. So that allows the, um, the two axles, the two motors to, uh, or the two wheels to operate independently or be locked together. Yeah. And uh, that produces this, this uh, locking differential, really handy off-road. Um, yeah, that's what it's really made for is yeah. off-road. So when you put this thing into, um, off-road mode, um, that'll, uh, that'll be locked solid and, um, and you will, you'll get traction to every wheel. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with, uh, there's a lot of little small things on here that, that, uh, that, uh, you know, the general public is never going to see. One of them is the magnets. Let's go back over to the PM magnet here or the PM rotor, I should say. And you can see that this is a little different than anything we've ever seen before. First off, the keeper um, doesn't go all the way up, which yeah. is fine from a weight standpoint, but we're a little worried about this. Now this damage occurred when we pulled the motor out, yeah. but um, one of the functions of the end plate, this aluminum end plate, is to help retain these uh, laminations. And so with, with the end plate not coming out to the full diameter, um, they've exposed the magnets, um, which isn't a bad thing, except that uh, now the laminations are not supported all the way to the OD, out, the outside diameter. Um, and there could be some issues with that. Yeah. I think one of the things that they're doing here though, is this opening it up 
allows oil, the cooling oil, to get to the magnets. And so they can help keep the magnets cool. I think that they're having issues with uh, magnets being maybe a little warmer than they would like um, because their magnets, and this is a magnet from the S, Model S, but it's very similar to this magnet. Um, they use these mono blocks uh, magnets. Uh, so this, this magnet is in one single magnet where their competitors and even Tesla in the past yeah. used a, uh, segmented. a segmented magnet <clears throat> where they break the magnet up into different segments. And you do that mostly for the same reason that you use motor laminations, because it's in a changing magnetic field. Then, and anytime you put a conductor, these magnets conduct electricity. Anytime you put a conductor in a changing magnetic field, you get eddy currents. So there could be currents flowing round and round inside the magnets generated by the changing magnetic field of the motor. Um, that's just a loss that they really would rather not have. And that produces heat, which they have to take care of by getting oil to the, to the magnets. But it unfortunately also reduces electric range. The losses in the magnets mean you have to put more more battery power into the to the battery to get the same electric range. And so this is one feature that we kind of wish Tesla would go back to the segmented magnets. Yes, it adds cost. It's and it it's counterintuitive because you're adding cost to the most expensive part in your motor. But overall the system costs can come down because you can reduce the amount of battery or you can give the customer longer electric range on the highway. So this is one feature <clears throat> out of a lit long list of really great things that they have on this. This is one thing that we think maybe they could improve. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Be kind of careful with those magnets. Yeah. Well, we, we've done quite a bit of, um, quite a few um, episodes on segmented bag, uh, magnets especially when they first came out in the Tesla Model 3. Yeah. We were really impressed with that. We had, I had never seen anything like it before. And all the, all the people at Monroe, you know, we kind of, um, we thought it was a hullback magnet, um, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's just this segmented. Is, this is one thing where I think Tesla could really benefit from some benchmarking, because uh, they could see where the rest of the industry, where their competitors wow. are going. Well, they're going. Not, not too many are there yet, but I know in talking to different people, this is what people are going to, and it's not that hard to go from that to that. You'd never know, and right. um, except that your range should increase uh, a little bit, and um, and you, uh, smoother performance is kind of like what the other the other benefit of segment, segmented magnets are. I mean, it's just a, a more efficient way of making the electric motor go. So yeah, most of our ideas tend to push people, our customers, in the direction of uh, saving money. This, yeah, is, this, this one, is one case where maybe it's worth well, spending a little it, extra money. The, the thing that we normally try and put out is that we're looking for uh, customer total accounted cost. Yeah. So over the life of the vehicle, um, this saves the customer a lot of money. Um, because actually electric cars, um, in, in the case of, of the stuff we're looking at right here, this car will probably go half a million, three quarters of a million miles unless you, you know, abuse it or, or something catastrophic happens to it, you'll never get that out of a, out of a piston car ever. Uh, and I, I know because <clears throat> I used to design them. So at the end of the day, this little teeny tiny change after three quarters of a million miles is going to make a huge difference on your pocketbook. So that's why, um, you know, we, we're not here to uh, kiss up continuously. There's no question about it. Tesla's stuff is totally, this has been a totally amazing teardown so far. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what could, what could be better? Well, going back to these um, would be one of the things that I would recommend. So I just wanted to point out one little thing about the, the way they're assembling the bearings on this drive unit, which is a little clever. Um, 
there is an issue when you assemble the bearings into the housing that you want to have a nice easy slip fit so that it goes together easily. The trouble with that is that that allows the outer race of the bearing to spin after it's assembled and that's not good. So most companies do something to try to clamp around the outside of the bearing. Um, but Tesla has put this little dent on the outside of the, the bearing and in the pocket, bearing pocket, they've put a little spring-loaded pin. So if it starts to spin, eventually it will catch on that and never spin further. And they did that on all of these uh, bearings to make it so that it's both easy to assemble and the outer race is um, trapped and can't spin. So anyway, let's have a look um, at a little bit over here at the um at the, um, the induction, induction motors. motors. Yeah, there, there's a, well, one thing I want to point out, uh, and you can see it in our report, um, this shaft is a new thing for Tesla uh, and new in the industry <clears throat> that I haven't seen. It looks kind of dirty, right? Uh, that's because it's cold headed to near net shape. Uh, so they can reduce the machining needed on the shaft. And uh, you can't make a great motor without a great shaft. And having a a way of doing that less expensively is a big deal. And uh, Tesla has made a big move here on this shaft. Um, the other thing that's interesting on this uh, induction motor, normally induction motors um, are skewed. And that means that the, um, there's a little angle to how the laminations are, are put in here. So it kind of looks like a corkscrew. Um, they've chosen to go with straight uh, um, bars inside their induction motor and they're able to do that because they put these little grooves in um, to the laminations to help reduce the torque ripple. So uh, it's a, a nice little design uh, way of uh, less expensively accomplishing the same thing as a skewed rotor. Oh. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the migration that, uh, that Tesla has gone through from um, the very first, um, very, very first uh, induction motors were absolutely a horribly expensive. So you can see here the stripes and the stripes are here, stripes are there and the stripes are here. They, they kept that, um, which is different than what you look at the induction motor, or sorry, the PM motor. The PM motor, see it has you can see the little offset. See, you've got this, and then you've got that, and then you've got this. Some other companies, what they'll do is they'll have one offset, and then another offset, and then another offset. And what that does is it helps get rid of noise. But with a with a PM motor, or sorry, with an induction motor, <clears throat> you don't have that quite quite that same kind of a similarity. So these things, machined copper, holy mackerel perhaps the most expensive induction motor on the planet. And then after you're done, there's another part that I couldn't find over there that fits over the top of it that actually interplays with it. Now, what they did was, the first thing they did was they went to, um, this is their new induction motor. And you can see here that <clears throat> what they did was they put their laminates in and then they cast over the top of it. This is a all done, uh, basically the laminates are pushed in in one area, then it's brought over to a molding machine and then you squirt uh, aluminum in. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what's going over here, but you can see that um, that motor and this motor are similar, but they're not the same. This is quite a bit bigger in diameter. And, um, and although I haven't taken it apart yet, my guess is this is gonna have some surprises in it as well. Yeah. That you know, the fact that they did put these little grooves in, and here previously they had a smooth outside diameter, <clears throat> except where we damaged it and took it apart. Yeah. Uh, the uh, and this helps reduce the noise for the motor. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So this this is all these little features and functions that they've uh, they put on here. All of them benefit the uh, uh, the product. It does look like they have uh, passages here 
Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, we haven't seen it for sure, but it's possible that they're using these to run oil yeah. through the motor to help cool it. I, I'm guessing that that's, that's going to be as well. We don't like guessing too much. I don't, I don't, I don't like to uh, guess a whole lot, but that's not a, uh, that's not really a guess. That's just a engineering assumption. Yeah. So like I said, everything we've seen so far has been pretty exciting. I, I, um, I have one of these vehicles right now. It's at the SAE show, but, but um, I will tell you that once you get beyond the fact that it's monster size, um, this, this engine combination gives you a remarkable ride. Uh, I, don't, I can't even hardly describe how, um, I don't know what the right word is, but uh, how powerful I feel when I'm driving this thing. It's, uh, it's got an amazing, uh, and, and it depends on which mode you put it on, of course, but it's just an amazing, uh, amazing feeling. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up what we've seen so far on the, uh, on the three motor design here. Uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching Monroe Live and uh, keep tuning because this, uh, this vehicle has uh, got endless amounts of, uh, of engineering know-how. Paul, any uh, closing remarks there? I would agree, and uh, stay tuned for our report uh, on the on everything about this motor, this setup. Thanks so much.